um, uh, delaying more, uh, we close uh, this uh, uh, set of cases uh, uh, with uh, uh, the intervention of Ms. Olia uh, Melep uh, Zabramna, head of the legal unit of the NGO Environmental People Law uh, European Eco Forum. And it's a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, please take the floor. Uh, thank you very much, uh, esteemed audience. It's a great pleasure and a big honor for me to be speaking uh, today about the experience from the uh, experience of um, uh, using Orhus Convention as the tool for to protect the environment from the uh, side uh, of uh, NGO. I am representing uh, NGO from Ukraine, which uh, had been active in the environmental field and the, in the field of Aarhus Convention for more than 20 years. Um, I, I think my first uh, appearance to the Aarhus Convention meeting was 15 years ago. So it's, it's a long way and we have very uh, positive uh, and a very positive experience of application of Aarhus Convention and positive experience of using Aarhus forums uh, in order to advance the environmental protection and sustainable development. So as it was mentioned by previous speaker, Aarhus uh, Convention is really a very important tool uh, for the government, for the civil society. Uh, here on this slide, I was uh, trying to provide uh, uh, some uh, citations of uh, uh, from different countries uh, which uh, were awarded by the ministries, respective ministers of these countries uh, and they were talking um, uh, they were explaining how important for their countries, for their agency is the Aarhus Convention uh, so uh, uh, to be uh, to be short um, I will not uh, be reading all of these uh, uh, opinions but the main um, oh. the main Main conclusions are that Aarhus Convention is the model of partnership between Aarhus, between uh, different stakeholders in the civil society. Uh, the Aarhus Convention focuses on the roles of the individuals and NGOs, and uh, it points out uh, uh, the contribution they can make to our common efforts to achieve sustainable development. Um, also, the Aarhus Convention is uh, being regarded as a tool for cooperation between members of the public and the governmental institutions. Um, and um, it opens uh, possibilities for all people who feel responsible uh, for the environment and uh, who want to protect the environment. So this uh, this uh, um, shows the importance of the Aarhus Convention for those parties who um, uh, who have been implementing Aarhus Convention for, uh, for many years. Uh, so, um, Aarhus Convention is uh, the legal tool um, pro, uh, signed on the international level, and it brings lots of uh, benefits on the national level and on the international level, um, especially for those countries which are parties to Aarhus Convention. So, as um, for the no uh, national level, I have to say that uh, ratification of Aarhus Convention doesn't mean that the country beca becomes very much uh, complying and following it. Uh, it's uh, actually um, adherence to Orhan Convention is quite a long way, quite complicated way with the, with the challenges, but at the end you receive very good uh, good results. Um, so on the national level for the party that uh, um, ratified Orhus Convention, it uh, sets the standards for uh, of environmental democracy for those who are making, uh, who are producing legislation for the uh, parliaments and those involved in the uh, law drafting process. Um, it also um helps to ensure effective access to environmental information, not only to environmental information, but also to the public information. So Aarhus Convention provisions influence uh, um, all of the legislation on access to information, including uh, environmental information. Uh, also, uh, Aarhus Convention uh, ensures participatory manner of decision making on different levels, national level, regional level, uh, local level, and this public 
public participation, um, uh, sometimes uh, it uh, at the beginning it was the challenge for the government to, to adapt to this decision making uh, process with the involvement of the public, and also it was the big challenge for the uh, public uh, because they were offered the opportunities and sometimes they didn't know how to use those opportunity and how to make comments and how to be effective in participation in uh, in the environmental decision making um so also um, the third pillar of the Aarhus Convention is very important. It's uh, access to justice. So it broadens access to justice in the in cases related to the environment. So it opens uh, courts for uh, affected communities, for affected citizens, and it's very important for them to um, to be able to to go to court when their rights were violated or where there are no other legal avenues to address their their, their problems to address the environmental problems. And also, the uh, judicial system um, is not always very open to the provisions of the Article 9 of, of Aarhus Convention. Therefore, for instance, in my country, in Ukraine, the, um, we uh, had been uh, making different judges trainings and talk to, to judges about the cases, about importance to um, to open the courts for, uh, for a public which is affected uh, um, which is affected by different uh, factories for uh, big uh, poultry farms, uh, uh, nuclear power plants, and other facilities which affect the, the environment and the rights of the citizens. So, so now uh, the situation is uh, uh, is uh, quite good, and the judicial system, after the trainings we we performed, uh, is very open to uh, to cases which are related to the environment, and also on the national level, the provision of the Aarhus Convention are opening uh, the mechanism for the protection of the activists, those vulnerable people who are suffering from the uh, pollution and also who are suffering from the persecution of their uh, on their own uh, or persecution of their families because of the activism, because of the um, of the need to uh, to protect their lives, to protect their children, kids, uh, um, grandchildren, etc. Et so the Aarhus Convention is giving the standards and providing the prote protection to those who are exercising rights under uh, Aarhus Convention. So this is really uh, very important. On the international level, um, um, Fiona yesterday made a great, uh, a great presentation on all of the um, uh, bodies, uh, um, institutions operating on the international level, uh, which facilitate uh, Orhus Convention application. Uh, so, on the international level, those Orhus Convention bodies they are quite working very effectively and keeping the implementation of the Orhus Convention under constant review, uh, which is very good for, for the parties. Uh, Orhus also framework of the Orhus Convention and its body is, uh, is the family of uh, uh, democracy and supporters and supporters of sustainable development. So it's very open and, uh, and effective network of, uh, um, of those who are passionate about the environment and the problems we are, we are challenging. And also, uh, also convention framework and the board is they are providing the assistance to governments um, in uh, promotion of Orhus Convention principle, in promotion of Orhus Convention implementation on the national level. This is the variety uh, of uh, different kind of assistance, including including capacity building, uh, expert assistance for those uh, governments who plan to develop legislation. So the secretariat is there to help with reviewing this legislation with. Um, with the other means. Uh, also, the Orhus Secretariat uh, provides uh, financial support for the members uh, uh, of the government to travel to different Orhus Convention meeting, as well as the members of the public are also having access to the financial support in order to be able to uh, to go to the Orhus Convention meeting in Geneva and to be able to uh, to give their say and to present their position. 
Um, so uh, I would like to say that uh, public uh, within the framework of the Orhos Convention uh, is organized in uh, um, Eco Forum, in um, uh, European Eco Forum, which is association of the uh, NGOs, of the members of the public for uh, from UNSC region. And uh, the Eco Forum uh, coordinates all of the uh, public participation within Orhos Convention bodies, facilitates uh, access to Orhos Convention meetings, uh, provides uh, um, kind of institutional memory for those who are um, who are coming and being introduced to Orhos Convention meetings and who are quite new. So this kind of institutional memory it coordinates uh, NGOs, coordinates their position before in advance uh, of different meetings like meeting of the parties, bureau meeting, work uh, working group meetings, etc. So uh, my organization is the long time member of the European Eco Forum and um, and we are also welcoming uh, all the time new members, uh, uh, new members of the public from from different countries, and providing them guidance how to uh, how to navigate and act effectively participate in in the meetings of uh, Orhus Convention bodies. So um, members of the Eco Forum are able to participate in the meetings of the parties, uh, as and they are having their role as the observers. Uh, but with the observer role, they are also provided a floor. To to, to speak at the meeting of the parties where all parties to the convention uh, are present, which is uh, very uh, important for us. Also, ECO Forum um, has its own uh, representative, permanent representative uh, in, in the uh, bureau meetings, um, uh, which uh, uh, this representative also foresees uh, and participates in the meeting of the bureau and is able to uh, provide input to the, to the agenda, to provide input on the issues of the implementation of the Orhus Convention, on the implementation of the work, work plan of the, of the Orhus Convention. And this role um, that is also very, uh, very important as uh, NGOs have their role in the bureau meeting as well. Uh, also, um, Eco Forum uh, members are able to participate in a work working group a meeting um, uh, with the observer status. A working group of the Orhus Convention meets more frequent than the meeting of the parties, which is one uh, one time in a four uh, in a four years, um, and. Uh, so it's also very valuable as uh, um, members, NGOs can participate in the working gr group meeting as well. Uh, also, there are three task forces. Um, there are three task forces created within uh, Orhus Convention. As Fiona mentioned yesterday, one task force is uh, um, uh, is uh, it's a um, it's a sphere of work. Uh, expertise is access to information. Another task force is dedicated to public participation, and the third task force is uh, dedicated to access to justice in environmental decision making. So NGOs have the active role in the work of these task forces. Uh, we have the floor, we can present our position, we can present our uh, best uh, best practice, we can uh, um, uh, contribute to the agenda uh, and many, many other issues. So it's also very open open forum where NGOs are very, uh, very active and usually participate together with the uh, representatives of the governments uh, of the parties of the Aarhus Convention. Um, the third uh, instrument, uh, which was uh, which was briefly mentioned yesterday, is the um, uh, the obligation of the party to provide the national implementation reports to this uh, to the Secretariat of the Aarhus Convention. Uh, the goal of this national implementation reports is to assess the compliance on the convention, and also the those national implementation reports are uh, very useful for the work of the compliance committee uh, under the Aarhus. Convention. Uh, so those national implementation reports have been prepared uh, once in, in the four years, and they are describing legislative, regulatory, and other measures that parties have uh, taken to implement the provisions of the Aarhus Convention. And also uh, a very important part of this national implementation report is the practical implementation of the uh, convention provisors, uh, provisions. So parties have to report to the Secretariat 
how practically they implemented the um, Aarhus Convention provisions. And the process of preparation of those national implementation reports is very, is very open. Uh, it involves public uh, in this process uh, in order to improve the quality and accuracy of the reports and uh, strengthen the credibility of the reporting uh, of the reporting uh, process. Um, uh, just a second, the alarm has been switched on, so I will switch it off. Um, uh, sorry, yes, the alarm was switched on. Mm. Uh, so uh, the report, uh, the process of preparation of this na national implementation report is very open, and public can comment to the draft of the national implementation reports. Uh, also, NGOs can make even shadow reports when they are um, when their comments were not included into the national implementation report prepared uh, by the government, and they can also send directly their national um, their shadow so called shadow reports to the secretariat to uh, to uh, so uh, the um, the goal is to uh, those usually those national implementation reports are prepared by or coordinated by the focal points to orhos convention within the respective uh, ministries of environment and this uh, um, helps to facilitate uh, uh, the process and the, the public usually is very active in the preparation of national implementation reports. Um, and also um, uh, the, uh, another issue which is very important for the for the members of the public and for the government and for the effective implementation of Orhus Convention is the work of the compliance committee. You have heard a lot um, that this uh, um, compliance committee is a very effective tool and uh, uh, the uh, non-governmental organizations have also the role to play there because uh, um, they uh, uh, they can trigger the procedure of Ors Host Convention Compliance Committee. Uh, and also what is important, the member of the public can nominate their members, um, their representatives to be the member of the Orhus Compliance Committee. And on the on the picture I, I presented to you, uh, the, uh, you can see the first uh, compliance committee elected. It was um, 20 years ago uh, in 2002, and one of the members of the Compliance Committee, professor from the Lviv National University, Svetlana Kravchenko, uh, she was the founder of the NGO where I am working, and she was elected as a member of Orhus Convention Compliance Committee, as the members are serving in their personal capacities, and they have to be to be independent, and they are being elected by, uh, by the meeting of the parties. So from this example, you can see that also uh, uh, distinguished members of, of the public, members of academia, they can be elected into the Aarhus Convention Compliance Committee, uh, serve there and review the implementation of the Aarhus Convention uh, by parties to Aarhus Convention. Uh, so um, with the next slide, I would like to give you a brief uh, um, case study from uh, from Ukraine, how um, Ukraine implemented Aarhus Convention and how public participation procedures uh, um, are working in, in Ukraine. Uh, since uh, since Ukraine uh, ratified Aarhus Convention, we, uh, we passed the respective legislation, uh, namely the um, law on environmental impact assessment a few years ago, and this law is in line with the Aarhus Convention provisions concerning uh, public participation in environmental impact assessment procedure. Uh, you have heard about this procedure from uh, European countries that were speaking um, ahead of me. Uh, so um, this uh, this is the case of the construction of a hydropower accumulation plant in Ukraine. Uh, and a few years ago, our energy ministry wanted to um, uh, to launch six hydropower plant turbines uh, in order to uh, have the accumulating uh, capacity, electricity capacity, and, and maneuvering. Uh, capacity in the south of Ukraine, um, very close to the one of the nuclear power plants that is being operated by Ukraine. And this project was uh, very uh, dangerous for the environment 
land uh, as um, uh, more than 55 hectares of the coastal areas of the river were to be flood flooded and those areas were, uh, were uh, the protected area of, of Ukraine with a special status so it was illegal to, um, to damage the protected area and also um due to the flooding of the of the big territories along the river um the there was a risk to the damage to our archaeological site important archaeological site there was a, a damage um, uh, there was a, a risk of the damage being done to the fish resources because usually damming of the river cuts off the migration uh, of the fish and this was actually the case that's why the public and uh, lots of environmental NGOs and general public were against this process because they were not um, uh, supporting the creation of huge water reservoir along the river um, as it uh, was supposed to cause a lot of environmental damage uh, so the the uh, procedure of environmental impact assessment started and in Ukraine we have a special registry of environmental impact assessment procedure where you can find all of the information background information where you can find environmental impact assessment report so the public was given 30 days for comments we were given the environmental impact assessment report for comments and during these 30 days we provided our comments as well as the members of the civil society organizations in Ukraine also provided the comments uh, there were also public hearings and the people also were speaking them uh, about the concerns that they had um, associated with this project proposals so um at the end, the Minister of Environment, who is the EIA decision-making body in Ukraine, uh, they took into account the comments uh, of the public, they took into account the uh, violation of the environmental legislation due to this project, and they uh, issued uh, their negative opinion, saying that this uh, activity, damming of the river and uh, uh, flooding of the bank areas or protected areas is illegal, therefore uh, they cannot... Uh, they cannot accept it. It's not acceptable critical from ecological point of view. So this uh, this is how Orhus Convention is working uh, on practice. So um, at the end, uh, it's my last slide. I would like to give uh, uh, the conclusions on uh, how uh, why Orhus Convention is important for the members of the public, and also it's important from uh, our governments who are participating actively and who are trying to implement Orhus Convention uh, in the best manner. Uh, so the Orhus Convention is uh, and its bodies are providing unprecedented access to meetings access to information uh, related to decision making and public involvement in meetings of different bodies under the Orhus Convention. Also public is allowed in negotiation process, in the negotiation of treaties like PRTR, you heard uh, a, a lot about it, like Orhus Convention itself, members of my organization, um, our founder, she was also participating in the negotiation uh, of the Orhus Convention Treaty itself. Uh, also, public has the, the right to be elected into the um, uh, Orhus Convention Compliance uh, a Committee, which is also very, very important and gives the big credibility and trust uh, to the con uh, Compliance Committee from the side of the public. Uh, also, uh, the uh, Orhus Convention uh, provides the members of the public the right to initiate the review of the effectiveness of the implementation of convention by the parties and public can instigate better compliance uh, um, with Orhus Convention through the mechanisms that I mentioned. It's a national implementation report, it's meeting of the parties and uh, uh, work of the um, uh, Orhus Convention Compliance Committee. Also, Orhus Convention 
mentioned, it's a forum to share the best case studies of effective implementation of Aarhus Convention on the national level. And here I have to mention the work of the task forces that uh, um, have uh, have meetings uh, almost once or two times per year, and the members of the public and the governmental representatives are sharing the best uh, uh, their best practices. And also, um, Aarhus Convention, uh, what is important is providing uh, um, a possibility and secretariat is always there to, uh, um, to, um, uh, to address uh, the request for a different kind of assistance. Uh, assistance in law development, law drafting, assistance in law implementation, uh, also the financial assistance in participation of Aarhus meeting, logistical assistance, uh, uh, expert assistance, and uh, many other ways. So here the Orhus Secretariat is really very, very effective and very open and very useful. And uh, it, it's really working hard to make the Orhus Convention effective and to accommodate uh, uh, all of the needs of the parties, all of the needs of the members of the pu public. And also it's working, yes, for, for the better environment and for, for the better democratic uh, in the future of, um, of our governments, of, uh, of the countries. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, attention. And if you have questions, I am I would be really happy to answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Olya, and uh, uh, thank you for your uh, 